Okay, here we go. This is a 12 volt motorcycle battery, AGM style, made by Yuasa. AGM is the acronym for absorbent glass mat. These things can stay on the shelf for ages. Let's take a look at this thing. Until they're activated, they're basically a lump, a useless brick. That's where this stuff comes into play. Sulfuric acid, magic juice, the elixir of life for these batteries. Until there's a shot of that, these batteries are useless. So let's see what else we got in the box. Oh, we've got a little nut and bolt pack, and that's just so you can tie down the terminals. And I think that's, yep. And then we got instructions. And of course, you're gonna read the instructions. I always do, but I usually wait until I'm done the project to see where it went wrong. Anyway, let's crack on with this. So, just find a clean, level surface. The next step is to peel off this bit of foil that seals the battery. Just peel it back. And what that does is expose the tops of the battery. There's six cells in here and you can see there's six little tubes that allows access for the acid. And that's the next step. So we're gonna mess with this stuff, the sulfuric acid. Now there's no playing around with this stuff. It is very corrosive. So at the very least, you wanna wear some safety glasses and it wouldn't hurt to have some rubber gloves too. Now you wanna save this bag because we can dispose of that container in it afterwards. Now you notice on the top here, we've got this little cap system and they're all linked. And you wanna save that because that little cap system there, that's actually what we put on the battery after. That's the cap to seal the battery. So put that to one side. Now you notice also on the tops of these cells here, this six pack of acid, there's foil seals. And that's what's gonna be punctured when we line it up on top of the battery. And if you actually look inside the battery on those little cells there, those little tubes are actually pointed, so they're beveled. They're actually just not flat. There's actually a bevel there so that when you press the acid bank on top of it, it pierces those little condoms. All right, let's do this. So flip it upside down, line it up. So it's right on the tubes like that. You're not gonna rock it. You're just gonna give it one quick thrust. Boom. Okay, there you go. Now the magic is starting to happen. You can see the bubbles here. The fluid's draining into the cell walls. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of a vapor lock and it just kind of hangs up. You can put a little puncture in the top here to allow it to flow. But nine times out of 10, if you just leave that go, it'll flow nicely. Hey, don't be squeezing it like a ketchup bottle. Just let it flow naturally. Come back in, a, I don't know, 15, 20, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, how are we looking here? I think that's all gone. Now we can gently pull this off. Put that to one side. What's interesting is, oh, this thing is percolating. Let me pull the mic off. You can hear that stuff percolating in there. Listen to this. Now you can smell it too. There's definitely a smell there. But listen to that thing. That's wild, eh? And it's hot, you can feel the heat. Definitely feel some heat there. If it's an 18 amp hour battery or less, you let this thing sit here and percolate for about an hour. Don't do anything, you don't even, you don't even need to seal it up. Just let it percolate for about an hour. We'll come back then and move on to the next phase. Okay, that's long enough. Things a lot quieter, things have calmed down. Not much smell. Okay, so we're ready for the caps. And they just slide into these top holes here. Very easy. Just line it up, there's nothing to it. Just press them in, work your way along the top. They're a little tight. You don't have to be ham-fisted here. What mother what the Yamaha. Holy Holy smoke. All right. <laughs> Okay, well, if you notice on the top here, it says, do not open. Yeah, I don't think you could open it. They don't have to tell you that. Holy smokes. All right, well, let's, uh, let's check for some voltage. What's crazy is just the magic of the sulfuric acid and the lead actually creates voltage. And if you look at this, 12.56 volts just from the chemical reaction of the acid and the lead. And that's pretty cool. Now you could actually throw this in your bike, fire it up, off to the races, you're gone. Everything's good. But you know, you wanna give this baby the best shot at a long, strong life. So they recommend that you give this thing a good solid top up, a nice charge to get going, right? So 
Hopefully you have a decent charger. I've got this guy right here. This is actually a branded Yuasa battery charger, but you don't need that. Anything that's a good battery charger maintainer type thing. And it's a smart charger. So as the battery charges, it uh, adjusts. So it's not gonna overcharge the battery. Red goes to positive, black goes to negative. Let's just take a look and see what she's charging at. All right, so you see here, it's bouncing at about 14.8, 14.9, something like that, back and forth. So it's, it's seeing that it needs a good dose of volts and amps, and that's what it's doing. And as I say, this is a smart charger. Over time, this will just sample what's going on in the battery and eventually lower the voltage and lower the current until we're sitting at optimum voltage. We'll leave that cook away for about, I don't know, four hours or so. I'll show you one more tip that most people don't do, and they should. At the end of it all, you'll be glad you did. So stick around for that. See you in four. Okay, that's long enough. Let's see where we're at. Now the charger is giving us double green lights, which means we're hanging at maintenance voltage. So let's actually see what maintenance voltage is. And according to this meter here, maintenance voltage is 13.02 volts. So that's just about right in the pocket. That's where we want to be. Before you go chucking this thing in your bike, there was one last tip that I wanted to give you, and that was, and it's something a lot of people do, but a lot of people don't, and I think you should, is write down the actual start date. It's like the birthday of the battery because we energized this thing. Like we actually activated it. We know when it started. As opposed to a battery that you buy off the shelf that's already activated out of the box, ready to go. You don't really know when that thing's birthday was. So I don't know, at least this way we can compare down the road, how long this would last. Um, and maybe you've had batteries in the past that you got one, two, three years out of. Maybe when you activate yourself, you'll get five, six, seven. Who knows, at least if you have a record of it, you'll be able to tell. And that's a good thing. Harry, right, I got stuff to do. See ya.